Hey athletes, we're talking RDLs here. First question we always want to answer, what are we doing here? We're trying to work what we call as your posterior chain. In the past, I've referenced it. Today, we're really going to talk about it. So what I'm talking about here, posterior chain being lower back, your glutes, and your upper hamstring. This is a nice unit that works together. It helps us generate a lot of power. And we're going to talk about how we make it work better and how we activate it using an RDL. So, you can guess, we're trying to work those muscles, your lower back, your butt, your hamstrings. Now, this exercise is awesome if you have tight hamstrings because if you go around the way we want you to, it can really help stretch your hamstrings if you feel like they're really tight. And also, this is a great hamstring activator. You're, you're going to feel your hamstrings and your butt possibly a little bit more than your lower back, and that's totally fine. Your lower back might not turn on unless we get the load way up there or you do a bunch of reps or something like that. But again, we're still activating those muscles. So let's see what an RDL looks like. We also refer to this as a hip hinge. You can see I'm hinging at the hip. You could put an object right at my glute and I just tilt on over. So. If you're a weightlifter, if you use barbells to deadlift, that's great. Very similar angles are happening. What we've got going is, again, we want those hamstrings to stretch, that butt, which, remember, is a curved muscle. So it needs to stretch in a curved fashion. And by doing a hinge, by tilting at the hip as if I have a, a, a little hinge right here, I'm tilting over my hip. That way my nice curved glute can curve and stretch. And then again, my lower back turns <clears throat> and stretches as well. We want to make sure we avoid any excessive arching, right? We don't want our lower back being in a nice curve. That would not be good. We still want to always think hip control. So just like in the plank, the push-up, all of the stuff I'll talk about, neutral, neutral, neutral spine, okay? We don't want it to arch. And that's actually our first fault is if there's a huge arch in it, we've got problems. So... What am I doing? Let's watch it again and I'll explain it. So, I'm slowly hinging at the hip. I'm sticking my butt back and up as high as I can, right? So again, not only am I sending it backwards, but I'm also trying to tilt it upwards because your hamstring is connected way up in here and behind your knee. So, we're trying to stretch the entire thing. So, by having my knees slightly bent, and I do mean slightly, you can see it's a little curved right there, that's going to help stretch this first chunk of my hamstring. And by getting my hips tilted up and back, that's going to fully elongate way up in here, causing the entire hamstring to stretch. So, as I'm going through that, I'm tilting as far as I possibly can to feel the optimal stretch, okay? And I do mean the optimal stretch. I'm not asking you to get the dumbbells as low as possible because that's not the case. And I'll show you with one of our faults why that might not be the case. I want the back of your legs on fire. I want them stretched as far as humanly possible while keeping a neutral spine, okay? If your lower back starts to round, which will happen if you're trying to go too low, it'll round down, then we're losing this stretch. We're not gaining any stretch on our hamstring. We're just trying to get the dumbbells lower, and that's not what we're trying to do. So coaches, make sure you're watching that. If their lower backs are rounding, we've got a problem. Let's continue on. So again, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. That's as far as I can go. Okay, my body, and I'm not the best at hip hinging, but my body is almost, my upper body is almost parallel to the floor. It's a little up, but it's almost parallel because that's as far as I can go. I'm working on it. My hamstrings, you can see it literally folding my shorts because they're so stretched and wedged up against them. And then you can see my butt is completely stretched. Okay, and also... My knee is still slightly bent, again, because we want that smaller part of our hamstring to stretch as well. So from here, 
just like we always talk about. What am I doing? I'm pushing the energy down through my legs. That will cause me to come up. Now, just like we talked about with kettlebell swings, cleans, anytime we are holding on to something, our arms do absolutely nothing. So the last thing I'd want you to do is try to lead with your head or lead with your shoulders, okay? We want to lead with your legs, right? We want to drive down through our body because, again, that'll cause these weights to come up. Now watch that. Boom. Right? I drove down. I extended all the way up. I still have my knees a little bit bent <clears throat> because, again, I'm not trying to throw my hips forward, okay? What am I trying to do? I'm trying to activate my glutes and I'm trying to activate my hamstrings. I don't need to drive my hips super hard through for this exercise, okay? I'm not trying to propel those weights up at all. So my follow through is right to here. This is as far as I need to go. My shoulders are behind the weight now, which they were dangling over before. And again, my hamstrings and my glutes totally contracted. I probably couldn't squeeze them much more than this. So let's take it forward. <clears throat> There's my butt squeeze. I'm coming, I'm driving down. My shoulders come up at a decent rate. I extend up, boom, I'm all the way back down. And you can see right here, I was fully straightened, okay? First thing I did, remember to bend my knees, okay? Because again, we're not trying to do a stiff-legged deadlift here. A stiff-legged deadlift means that your knees are completely straight. That's not what I'm trying to do. Again, I'm trying to make sure that my hamstrings get stretched fully. And if my legs are straight, this red highlighted part isn't gonna stretch. So again, bend your knees first, then drive your hips back and up, stretching those hamstrings, keeping those knees just slightly bent. All right, let's talk faults. And zoop, okay, first fault. You're tipping, you're tipping, you're tipping, and you're thinking, I got to get lower than this because my coach wants me to get as low as I possibly can. And boom. Okay, I was one, one rep behind. What happened? Watch my knees. Okay, I'll rewind it. Watch what happens in my knees. I'm tilting, tilting, tilting. Great. You can tell my hamstrings are stretching, 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 stretching. Boom! I drive my knees forward. What that's doing is it's taking stretch out of my butt, out of my upper hamstring, and it's starting to put it into my quadricep here, okay? Because my shoulders are coming up a little bit because my knees are bending, and I'm going too low for my flexibility. I'm re-bending my knees. So coaches, watch to make sure your athletes are not re-bending their knees. So let's see that one more time. Tilt, beautiful, beautiful, boom. I'm starting to rebend my knees, no good. Right? Tilt, rebend my knees, no good at all. Okay? My hips are dropping, my hamstrings aren't very stretched, but hey, I'm doing a deadlift because that's what my coach asks, but that's not what we're going for. Now, another problem is if you reach with your arms. If I try to reach with my arms, you can tell in my upper back, uh oh, I'm rounding forward. My shoulders are coming too far in front of the weight. I'm rounding my upper and mid back round a little bit. And if I take it too far, my lower back is going to round too. So you got to remind your athletes, and you as an athlete have to remember, you're only holding on to the weights with your hands. You are not moving the weights with your hands. What are you moving the weight with? Your glutes, your hamstrings, by doing a hinging pattern, right? By hinging at the hip, you just let your arms dangle a little bit. Now, if your athletes are having problems with keeping their arms, <clears throat> have them stand up as tall as they can. When they stand up as tall as they can, they're going to feel this lock in their lats here. Tell them to keep that lock. What also might help them as a cue is keep your shoulders back and keep your shoulder blades down. That'll allow their spine to stay a little more flat and they can hinge appropriately. So one last time, an RDL. I bend. I tip, and I drive into the ground. 